Hey everyone, I've got another liquid soap video for you today. I thought I'd just show me setting up what I'm doing just for fun, something different. This is my plastic sheeting that I put down. I just got that from Bunnings. It's really good. It's nice and thick so it protects your bench. Uh, I've got my soap utensils and my little three litre crock pot there. Got my safety goggles. I just keep all my soap bits and pieces in that box and it's quite good. So I'm getting everything ready. So I'm making a rice bran oil soap today. Here's the rice bran oil. It's very old. I've had it for so long. There's my potassium hydroxide. Um, I just really wanted to use it up and I've never made 100% rice bran oil liquid soap before. So I thought I would give it a try just for fun. So this is like one of those soap with me videos, I guess. I don't know. It's a total experiment. So we'll just see how it goes. So I start off with 500 grams of rice bran oil. I just put that in my crock pot, turn it on and get it warming up. The full recipe is linked below. It'll be on my website. So all the details will be there. Um, so once you've got your oil in the crock pot, uh, heating up, you just get your safety gear on. I'll put my goggles on. You always, always have to have goggles for soap making. You really must protect your eyes. Um, I've also got a mask on and the gloves. So then I weigh out the potassium hydroxide. We need 102 grams for this recipe. This is a 1% super fat recipe. So I'm not going to be neutralizing this. I'm just going to be making it with a very minimal super fat and that's all you need to do. Make sure you put the lid on your hydroxides, whether it's sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, because they are extremely hygroscopic, which means they attract water out of the atmosphere. So always keep the lid on. Then I weigh out my water. I'm using 154 grams of pure water, which is in my case today, that part was demineralized water. And then just in a well ventilated area, stand back, Make sure you've got your goggles on. Slowly pour your potassium hydroxide into your water. I've got my, my sliding door and my windows all open. It was the first sunny day we've had for ages, so it was really just kind of enjoying being able to open up the house and make some soap today. It was good. Once that's all dissolved, set it aside, keep it safe, and then I'm also adding glycerin into this recipe. It's virtually very similar, almost the same as my 100% olive oil liquid castile soap recipe I did not long ago. Um, so 102 grams glycerin went into this, but I didn't quite have enough. So I put a little bit of water in my glycerin bottle and used that um, to, to make it up to the 102 grams. So it, it's okay if you have to do that. You don't have to use, you know, you can use all water if you want to and not use the glycerin, use water instead. But the glycerin acts as a solvent and it helps to really speed the whole process up of saponification for this kind of liquid soap recipe. So I'm just taking the temperature. It's only 39 degrees Celsius there, so it's still quite cool liquid soap recipes uh, are good to to make with a fairly hot process but I just wanted to get started the crock pot is still heating up I've got it on high to bring it up to temperature so you know it um, it's okay to start a little bit cooler if you just want to get started so pour the lye solution into the oil and then add the glycerin in as well right from the beginning make sure you get it all out and stir that through. This is the most basic liquid soap recipe you can make. Um, I was actually going to make one with coconut oil in it as well, similar to my laundry soap bar recipe. You can see that temperature's coming up there, 48 now. Um, but I just, the curiosity got the better of me. I really wanted to see what it would be like to make liquid soap just with rice bran oil. And you'll see, I couldn't believe it. This recipe went even faster than my olive oil one, the one that I shared recently. See how thick that got? <laughs> you hear me going, what? Um, yeah, I couldn't believe it. it. Didn't expect that. No, I did not expect it to saponify so fast. 
it went to this kind of thick trace straight away you can see it looks kind of grainy though and I'm like hmm, I'm not so sure about that it's that can't be a true trace so I kept blending and um, it never said You can tell I'm a bit surprised. I couldn't believe that it went so fast. It, went, it literally just thickened up as soon as I started stick blending it. But I kept blending because that grainy look to me is a bit sus when it's grainy like that. Um, you know, it's not fully nice homogenous mix. And you can see now as I'm stirring it, it got more runny again. So it definitely... Uh, sped along quite quickly but it went through a couple of little phases of its own so I kept stick blending uh, it got a little bit runny as you saw but fairly quickly it starts to thicken up again so it's quite a brilliant little recipe this one um, it's a very mild liquid soap it's very very similar to the olive oil you can see that one there, the temperature's coming up, it's 55, 137 Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, 55 Celsius. So you just keep an eye on the temperature as you go along. You don't want things to get too hot. Um, so just keep blending. Um, yeah, this is really, really similar to my liquid Castile soap recipe, the olive oil one I shared recently. Rice bran oil and olive oil are very similar except rice bran oil has some stearic acid in it which does make it trace faster which you may know if you've used it in bar soap recipes so I'm not surprised this went fast but I guess I was a little bit surprised that it went that fast <laughs> um, but I was really impressed by it it uh, came together so easily there was no separation at all and look at that thick pudding couldn't believe that and it was like under eight minutes or so that is less than eight minutes <laughs> i cannot believe that there you go wow <laughs> you've got two lots of narration going on here <laughs> it's quite funny um so yeah under eight minutes that was at a really nice thick trace i couldn't um blend it anymore after that so i just left it to cook you can see the the temperature was getting a bit warm at this point I realized I didn't have enough demineralized water for the dilution so I went to the shop to get some unfortunately they didn't have any but this is the soap when I came back it's now at 69 Celsius 156 Fahrenheit which is a really good temperature so finally got to that good temperature and the soap is nearly done that's how fast it was I was only out for about 30 35 minutes you can see it's gone a little bit sort of fluffy on the sides, but it had that really translucent Vaseline look on the top, which is a giveaway that your soap might be nearing completion. So I decided to do a little bit of a test. It was really fast, but I thought I'll just give it a try and see if it's done yet. Uh, you can see the mixture is a bit cloudy, but according to the pH test strips, uh, it, they came out green which to me is a very good sign that it's definitely well on its way to being fully saponified. Um, rice bran oil liquid soap, according to my reading, can sometimes be cloudy because of the stearic acid in it. So I wasn't sure if it was ever going to be really clear. Um, and you can see it wasn't there on that clarity test. But I decided to cook it a bit longer just to see if I could get it to kind of clarify a little bit more and unfortunately because I didn't have they didn't have any demineralized water at my local shop I uh, didn't have time to go looking further afield I used rainwater from our rainwater tank and filtered it through a coffee filter and then boiled it to sterilize it so I don't necessarily recommend you doing this I think distilled water or you know more properly purified water might be better but this was all I had so um, just make sure you sterilize any water that you're using really thoroughly so this is about probably half an hour from the first test and look at that it is clear now so it's a lot more clarified than it was the first time which is great 
Uh, you can see there's little chunks of paste in there, but that's all right. And I did another pH test. I didn't really need to, but you can just see again, it came out green, which is about eight to nine, according to my test strips. You know, they're not the most accurate way to test pH, but they give you a good general guide. It's fine for the home hobby soap maker like me. And this is my cooled off, slightly cooled off, um, filtered, boiled rainwater that I'm using for the dilution. I started off with um, 1,150 grams of water for that dilution, but you'll see later I had to, I had to add more. Uh, it formed a bit of a skin on the top after this, so all the details of the full amount that I recommend will be in the written recipe. Um, I don't know why, but I always want to stir the paste when I put the dilution water in, and it's always fruitless, futile. <laughs> you can, it just sticks to the sticks to the um, the spoon. You can't dissolve it anyway, so I don't know why I stir it. So I let this heat up, and about an hour later, after the paste has um, softened a bit in the water. I get my stick blender and that really speeds up the dilution process. Just make sure you burp the blender, like push it under the, you'll see me doing this. See that? So I like kind of push the stick blender under the water to get the air out of it because you don't want too many bubbles in your liquid soap. You'll see why a bit later on. So I just, you don't have to do this. You can just leave your paste sit in the water on low heat and just let it sit there for a day and eventually it will dissolve. But if you want to speed up the dilution, then blending the paste into the dilution water uh, is a really good way to speed it up. So I just blend until there's no chunks of paste left basically. It looks really white and creamy and opaque. That's because there's a million tiny little bubbles in there. There's nothing wrong with the soap. <clears throat> you'll see it clarifies once those bubbles come out. And here we are at 6 p.m. See that skin on the top? See part of that's clear, part of it's white. The white part is just bubbles, so don't worry about that. It's nothing wrong with the soap. Um, but that is a sign that you need to add more dilution water. Uh, you basically have to have enough water to dilute the soap so that it doesn't form a skin like that. And if you, you know, if you take the skin off, a new skin will just form and you'll end up with uh, like your hand pumps will clog, you know, your soap dispensers will clog. So you really need to get it past that forming a skin phase. I just blended that skin back in. As I said, that white part was just bubbles. So don't worry about that. It'll all clarify perfectly. So I blended that in, left that to sit overnight, just turned off. And here it is the next day. Perfectly clear, non-skinned rice bran oil liquid soap. It's beautiful. No skin. <laughs> I was pretty happy. I think I could have used slightly less in that final part of dilution water that I added. In the recipe on the website, I'll go into the details of what I think would be perfect, but I probably added slightly too much. So I decided to thicken this a little bit with my 20% salt solution. I just keep this in the fridge. It's just two parts water to eight parts, wa uh, sorry, two parts salt to eight parts water by weight. You just make that solution and then just store it. And then you can use that in very small amounts to thicken your liquid soap recipes. It only works for recipes with soft oils though. It doesn't work for liquid soap recipes with coconut oil or lots of hard oils or fats, but for olive oil, rice bran, those types of um, unsaturated fats, it works really well. So when you use a salt solution, you've just got to be patient, add a bit in, let it sit for a while. So I let it sit for an hour to, that, to really see how thick it's going to get. I decided to add another half tablespoon. So I used a tablespoon of the salt solution in total into this batch. Um, and you can feel it thickening as you're stirring it. Um, it didn't thicken it a lot, 
but you can't add too much of the salt solution. You've just got to be quite conservative with it and be happy with a little bit of thickening. If you keep adding it to get it thicker and thicker and thicker, eventually it will just ruin the soap. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, but I was really happy with that. I didn't put any essential oils in this. I'm going to fragrance my bottles sort of individually at a later time. And I have actually been really enjoying unscented liquid soap lately. I really like just the plain soapy smell. There's something kind of, I don't know, simple about it that really appeals to me. Um, this is a cordial bottle. I will confess, I didn't have any bottles. And look, I'm just a home hobby soap maker like most of you probably. I don't have new bottles. I just wash out old bottles f from products and, you know, water bottles and things like that and reuse them. Um... Just make sure if you're using any old bottles, wash them out really, really thoroughly. And I actually use um, brewing sanitizer spray like that they use in uh, home brew bottle sanitizing. I sanitize all my bottles with that stuff as well as giving them a good wash out. Um, this is actually a witch hazel bottle. You know that TN Dickinson's witch hazel stuff that you can use as a facial toner? I love that stuff. So... Those little bottles are great for liquid soap. I use them all the time. They've got a nice little flip top cap. Um, so I put some in there as well. It's a lovely colour. It's got a lovely nice golden amber colour. More amber than the olive oil one, which is more pale yellowy colour. Um, and this is an old detergent bottle, a <laughs> dishwashing liquid bottle that... I scavenged from from work um, out of the recycling uh, so that seems a bit dodgy but you know you use what you've got I've just got to use up um, resources around me because I, I'm not going to go out and buy brand new bottles for my liquid soap when it's just for our purpose so you saw the total yield there um, 2.3 kilograms worth of soap that's like over two quarts of soap um, and that left one on the left there in the glass bottle, that's the olive oil one I made recently, just to show you the difference. And that's it, really. A um, little bit of a demo here of what it's like to use. This is just me cleaning up the crock pot. Liquid soap making is very simple, really, if you keep your recipes simple. Um, very easy clean up, you just rinse out your, <laughs> your crock pot because it's already got soap in it, so it's quite nice. If you don't have a crock pot, you can make this on the stove on very, very, very low heat. Um, if you've got a gas stove, be really, really careful. I would actually use a double boiler, I think, but do your own research. I'm not an expert in liquid soap making. I'm just a hobby home soap maker like you guys and this is just me kind of playing around with, with things and trying things out. Crockpot's probably the easiest and safest way to go if you can get one. But if you can't, there are other options. Um, yeah. This turned out to be a really nice soap. So the, the feel of it, to me, is really similar to the olive oil one that I made. It's quite gentle. It doesn't have a really great lather. Um, but you'll see, I think it's good enough. Um, I have been using it in the shower since I made this video and it's really quite nice. I've been washing my face with it. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice gentle soap. If you want to make a liquid soap for showering, hand washing, face washing, any kind of gentle cleaning task, like just general kitchen use, like what I'm doing here, cleaning out my sink and washing dishes, then this is a really good one, it's just as good as any other kind of olive oil based one. We're coming to the end of the video, people. My um, camera battery ran out, so this is going to cut off in a second. But thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll see you again really soon. Take care.